Welcome back again, folks. Always good to see you guys. I'm glad you came back. We're going to, uh, I think we're going to work on frets today. By the way, I hope everyone's doing well. Um, and I want to thank you for the support on an earlier video. You know the one I mean. Thanks to all of you that replied to that for all of your replies. They were just what I figured they would be. Common sense and physics, you know, you can't deny it, man. Anyways, uh, we're going to work on frets today on this Citroen. And uh, I've been checking it here. I'm going to go over it with this. This is a diamond grit file. And uh, you can sharpen knives or whatever with it. I use them to flatten frets because they are so good for that, man. They are excellent for flattening the frets. So that's what we're going to use. And then we'll put the, uh, well, later on, we'll put the uh, radius back into the frets. But I want to bring a camera over here and show you a couple little things that I always do uh, to assure the neck is straight, perfectly flat, straight as you can get it anyway, before you start doing any filing on those frets. So let me bring you closer, and we'll get right into this thing. I thought we would uh, split this fret job up into uh, several different videos. Instead of making one long video, you know, and dragging you out, it, it would take a long time to do all the frets. And I'm not going to knock the nut out. I usually do that. But I'm going to have to cut around the uh, finish if I do it. And it's glued in. And uh, I'm just, I'm not going to do it. I don't need to. I can pay close attention to the first few frets. There's a high one there, which I'll show you in a minute. Right now, if you can get your neck as flat as you can get it, okay? And then you can take a piece of, piece of paper and just uh, start checking it. See where all that paper will go under there. And you can see here that these frets are nearly perfectly flat. There's a low spot. See, it, it won't go under there. It does there. And there it does not. That might just be one low fret. But uh, you can see here that we are nearly perfectly flat and level. So this is good. That's where you want to start when you do your frets. You want to have that, that neck as flat as you can possibly get it. And like I say, I'm going to start with this. This is a fine. It's a diamond grit uh, file. And I'm just going to start right here. And... I'm not going to bore you to death with this, but I'm going to color the frets blue first. And uh, then I'm going to do this. In fact, I'll color them blue right now while, we, while we're talking about it. Well, hold on. Hold on, i got to get something else. Had to go get glasses for one thing, but I, I wanted to get this fretboard protector because I don't, uh, I don't tape up all of the frets. Like a lot of, see a lot of these guys doing. I don't know. That's just a time-consuming, unnecessary thing. I do occasionally. Uh, it depends on several different things, but usually I just use these little fret protectors, and that's exactly what I need them to do. protects the fretboard. The uh, braces turned out good. They are glued back and fixed. You can tap on this instrument anywhere now and you don't hear the loose brace effect like before. I'll show you what's going on here in a minute. There we go. Now we have blue frets, okay? What that's going to do, when I run this thing over these frets, it's going to show me exactly what is being removed and what's being left behind. Now, there's a little bit of an arch in this uh, fretboard. The radius is a 12 inch. And if you notice, I'm not working in one place. You know, I was, going, I was going to show you this. Uh, should have did it before I did this. Yeah, there's that 
dip when I was sticking the paper under there, remember? Found a low spot here. Well, like, there's a high fret, which, or a low fret, actually. just in that one area and I think one of these frets up here are high too yeah when we get finished should be able to rock on every fret and none of them rock at least that's what we would like to see and you can see here already I don't know if the camera is getting it or not you can see already what's being removed and what's being left. I hope the camera's getting that. Um, these frets right in this area are getting hit more than the rest. There's some down here on the fretboard extension that's not getting hit at all. Down here. Maybe just barely. But we're going to make all of them level. Completely level. And you can do it in short order with this file. Just want to be very careful. It acts like that second fret is high. Like I say, I'm not knocking the nut out of this because I can level these frets perfectly without doing that. If I knock the nut out, then I have to reseat it and glue it back in, and it's just uh, not really necessary on every instrument. Now, when I push this thing, are we in the camera? Yes, we are. Like, uh, when I'm going that way with it, I put the weight on the back side, like so. I'm going to go this way, I want to put the weight on the back side, like so. I'm going to go back a little bit farther than that. We are touching all the frets right now. There's a place here and here and here and here it's not touching. And a little bit down here. But uh, I'll, I'll get the camera and show you a closer up shot in a few minutes. Well, I'm making progress. I painted them blue again and went over them once more and we are flat, baby. Uh, the tenth fret was very high right here. This upper portion of it was. And the uh, second, I think was the second fret here was very low. No, it was high. It was very high. This first fret is extremely low. I hardly took anything off of it. It was way higher than all the frets. Let me sweep this off and I'll bring the camera down here and uh, show you a closer look. And it's just barely skimming on these frets down here. I don't imagine he's going to be playing much down in here, but they're flat. They are all completely flat now. Also, I should have made mention with this with this file diamond grit file you don't have to push down on that thing very much just the weight of your hand on there and work it all the way back and forward and that's all it takes I mean just in a little bit and you have flat frets so there we have it they are completely flat now uh, hold on here I can show you we had rocking which was going on here before there is no rock there now No rocking anywhere. This 10th fret, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That fret was uh, very high before. You can see now it's completely flat all over. And the ones before it, and the ones before it, and the ones after it. So we are good. So, we need to put the radius back in the board now. Uh, uh, i get a 12 inch radius here. And i got to put different sandpaper on it, of course. Hold on. 
Here's your little tip of the day that I learned a long time ago. I got uh, CA glue here, thin, and I'm just going to dump that around on the, I have tape, as you can see I have tape there on my radius block and the sandpaper, the back of the sandpaper. And I'm just going to uh, glue the uh, tape together, actually, it's all I'm doing here. Okay, I don't have any accelerator, so we gotta wait. I don't like this stuff anyway. You old subscribers probably heard me complain about it, but uh, it won't take very long anyway. What this does? Okay, I put I put tape on the block under here. Okay, just stuck tape. You can see it there sticking out, and then I put uh, tape over to the back side of the sandpaper. Put the CA glue on the on either one, and I put them together like this. Okay. And there I have my sandpaper now, 12 inch radius block to put the radius back in the frets. Now, when I'm finished with that, all I got to do is get a hold of this sandpaper, pull it right off, and I'm ready to put a new piece on there. It's a really well known trick. It works wonderfully well. And uh, you can use that for a lot of applications. So remember that. Try it sometime. It really works nice. I got to let this set up for a little bit longer, and then I'll bring you back and we'll. But all right, I done colored the frets blue again. I don't know if you can see that or not, but they're blue. And we'll put the radius back into it. Hold on. Well, I think the glue is dry enough here now. That we can work with this. Um, like I said, I've already colored the frets blue again. I measured the uh, radius several days ago. I know it's a 12. I have a 12 block here. If you can see the, I don't know if you can see the 12 on it or not. And uh, I got 600 grit paper on there. That's pretty rough. But I'm, I'm going to be able to tell exactly where this, uh, you know, what's getting sanded and what's not. And right away, nearly all of the entire frets are getting sanded. There's a tiny little bit right in the center of the fretboard, all the way down the center of the board. So I've got to, I've got to do this until the ends of the frets are sanded down enough until this block hits every fret in the center. And by doing this, I can tell if I maintain my flatness or not. We are getting there fast too. Here you can see on the paper it's just starting to hit right in the, in the middle area now. So uh, just a little bit more of this will do it. 600 grit paper, it doesn't take very long. And these frets are actually pretty soft in this. I'm surprised they didn't have any more wear than they did. You can see it hitting better and better in the center of the block in this area. In fact, it's uh, barely starting to touch completely across now. And I'm not pushing down hard. I'm just kind of supporting the neck here. And just, uh, you know, you don't have to press very hard. You don't want to press very hard because, like I say, you can press hard enough to bend the neck and sanding it as it's bent, the frets would no longer be flat then, would they? Woo! Glory! Check it out hitting in some places a bit more than others yet, but we are very close. This takes a lot of time and patience and care. You want to be very, very careful. You don't want to slip and screw up the finish or the fretboard or any of that beautiful inlay, nothing like that. You don't want anything like that to happen. And here we can see we still have flat frets. I mean, they are flat, flat. But they have a 12 inch radius in them now. 
Now, if you notice these frets over the fretboard extension, they're not blue anymore. Well, I mean the tops of them aren't. But they haven't been filed as much. I wonder if any of you can tell me why. They're level. They are completely level with all the rest of the frets. But you see how flat those are? Every fret, how flat it is. You get down here to the body, the fretboard extension, they are not as flat all of a sudden. Can anyone tell me why that's like that? If you're thinking because there's fall away here, you are correct. So these frets didn't get as much filing because they're falling, they're, they were lower actually. The fretboard's lower here than it is up here. But the frets are level. This is what I always talked about, those uh, notched uh, straight edges. You know, if you're, they're measuring the, the wood, the fretboard, not the frets. Right now, doing this, I'm concerned with the frets. I don't give a shit what the wood's doing. I don't care that the wood falls away right here. What I care about is those frets being completely flat and in uniform. And they are that. You got to dig these new camera lenses, man. I got to sweep that crap off of there. Yes, sir. Glory! Woo! The boogity bob. So let me uh, point out uh, notched uh, straight edges have their place. But I personally, I don't like them for doing frets, like I said, because, you know, you can have fall away down here. If you got a notched uh, straight edge on there and you're, you know, adjusting your truss to get it perfectly flat to do this job and you have fall away down here, you know, it's the frets that you're concerned with, not the fall away or the, how, how flat the wood is. It's the frets that you're concerned with. So I want a straight edge that will lay on the frets, not the wood. You know what I mean? I can tell these frets are flat, dead flat right now, all the way down. You could probably take a piece of paper like we were doing a little bit ago and not be able to get it in there anywhere now. I mean, just, you know, between the frets you can, but not like before. It just barely goes between the frets now. So I, I'm uh, assured that they are completely flat. And I used a uh, unnotched straight edge to do it. Uh, like I said, we'll split this up. Next video we'll start crowning. And uh, I've got crown files already out here now. And I'm going to tell you a big tip on these crown files from Stumac. The ones we love to hate. Uh, really big tip on that coming to you very soon. On the next video, I'll tell you about that. So stay tuned for that. We got a visitor, by the way. How you doing, cue ball? Where you been, baby? I have missed you all night long. Where you been, girl? Uh, like I say, next video we will crown the frets, and then we'll start on the sandpaper and working our way through many, many different uh, sandpapers. Cheers. I'll see you there. I hope to see you there. Tell them. Say, I love you. Tell your YouTube friends, I love you. <coughs> what? <coughs> I love you. Oh, no, no. Don't start howling. Don't. I love you. I love you. I love you. <coughs>